Welcome to Grace Community Church's virtual service. We are so honored that you are here. And if you came looking for love and support and encouragement, you came to the right channel. Father, we come before you this morning and we want to thank you for all the moments in our life that we felt your presence so strong and so near and so real. But Father, we also want to thank you for the moments that that we didn't even know when you were carrying us, when you were making a, a path for us, when you were making circumstances so that we would grow. Father, we don't want to be the same Christian that we were the day Jesus saved us as when we are called home. So we just pray, Father, that you would present yourself in such a real way in our lives. Help us, Father, as we try to prune ourselves and break down the doors so that we can be closer to you, so we can be who you intended us to be. And forgive us, Father, for the times that we've not done that. You are an incredible God. You are an amazing Father. And we love your Son, Jesus. And we pray all of this in his precious, beautiful name. Amen.
once again, we would like to take up our offering. Um, we pause and we do this. Some churches, they say, oh, well, we're more spiritual. We don't, we don't do that in front of everybody. We take up offerings because the scriptures indicate that in giving to support the work of the Lord through uh, what we're doing here with a virtual service or through the outreach of the local church. The local church here, we're able to send missionaries. We're able to hire staff. We're able to uh, do the things necessary to try to be a witness in our time. It's a very challenging time, that's for sure. Um, there, we've got to come up with more with new creative and more um, dynamic ways to reach out to a generation that's totally different than when we were younger. So uh, we try to use everything that you give in a way that uh, we can maximize whatever is given. And we are grateful for those of you who have shared. Thank you so much. Some of you have sent little notes in and said that it's been a blessing to you. We hope so. That's why we have decided as the church leadership and the elder board and the membership to continue doing this because we're not doing it to make our church the church that's out there. And that, I mean, there's tons of churches that have multi-million dollar budgets and TV programs and all of this. We don't, okay? We don't have that. Whatever is given is what we use. And so we thank you and we are grateful for you. And by the way, we would love to meet you if you're out there listening in some place far, far away and you come and visit, please come and visit. There's nothing like personal interaction. The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. That's why I was so resistant to TV, quote-unquote, outreach and ministry. A lot of churches do this, virtual. I just, I just had a, a reticence because Jesus came and He touched and He hugged and He wept and He did all those things. And when you're around our ministry here, you encounter the human touch, okay? You find the imperfection of the other humans around you, and you have to learn how to forgive and work with and work through things together. It's easy to listen to stuff on television in the comfort of your own home and your living room, but to get involved in the messiness of human relationships and the ups and downs of the lives of people, that's a lot different. So... Please um, continue to support, but at the same time, pray for us, and at the same time, uh, try to do what you can to be involved uh, with the ministry of the outreach of the church, because that's what God has, hit, has put us here on this earth for, to reach out. And there's a lot of needy people. I cannot help but think that somehow it was a failure in witness somehow concerning the individual's who did all of these horrendous acts. I'm not blaming Christians, but we might have had it, so, had it something off of it had we been more aggressive about sharing about God's love and God's forgiveness. I know that we're living in a world that's be, bereft with evil and um, we can't solve everything and we're gonna continue to see these things escalate. There are prophecies about that. So we need to continue to do all we can to reach out, okay? So pray, pray that God will help us and pray that God will use us perhaps to touch somebody. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, Lord, we come, we give. We've been doing this, some of us, for a long, long time. We haven't seen all of the results and we may not ever see all of the results here. I think Paul said that, command those who are rich in this world to be generous so that they may receive a rich welcome into heaven. I guess there is where we'll see the results of our investments. There is where we will realize and cash in the compounded interest of, I supported that church. I supported that teaching and that evangelistic outreach. I supported that missionary. I did that because people needed to know. And I didn't know that my little gift was going to help kids in Africa or or that individual in Canada or that other individual in the Pacific Rim. Lord, help us to understand that it's, it's, uh, it's something that can have a, an impact that is, it, far, it goes on far ahead of us and it has a compounding effect. It might touch just one person who might touch another and another. We just don't know, but you do. Help us to do, do all we can to manage the resources you give us to continue to reach out as much as we can for the days grow short. In Jesus' name, amen.
All right, let us pray. We come unto you, God. In the midst of a world that says you don't exist, we believe you do. And you don't exist because we believe you do. You exist because before all things were, you were. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The Ancient of Days. We come to you. And we know that you care. For you yourself said this when you were here. He cares even when a bird falls from the sky. How much more worth are you than a little bird? So Lord, we come to you knowing that you are God. Knowing that you care. And we lay out our needs to you. All that has been shared publicly and all that has not been shared. We lay out our lives and our needs to you. I suppose the number one prayer request isn't just the physical challenges of needing healing or recovery from physical things. We pray that our spirits and our souls would continue to grow and to get healthier with you. We pray that no matter what happens to our physical existence, we would always trust you and serve you. We pray for the non-believers all around us, our family members, our friends, strangers that we don't know, that you being the Lord who calls the dead out from the grave would call them out like you said in the Gospel of John. The time is coming, you said, when those who are in their graves will hear the voice of the Son of God and they will live. So we know that that meant that those who are unsaved would hear that voice of the Savior saying, I'm the one. Come to me, look at me, follow me. So Lord, we pray you would do this because we live in this atheistic, agnostic world of people and they have been deceived by the lies of an enemy. And this enemy is crafty and deceptive. I think the scriptures say we are not unaware of the devil's schemes. So he's always scheming and plotting and figuring out little things to make us doubt you. Just like at the beginning, to doubt you. We are past that, hopefully. I pray that if anyone in here isn't past the doubting of God, that you would take away doubt from their minds and give to them a solid faith, a solid conviction that nothing moves them, that they are unshaken. And we pray for those that don't know you, Lord, that they will be delivered from atheistic agnosticism and uh, so-called uh, atheistic science and false religions and false human philosophies and political systems. We pray that you would deliver them Lord God, from the kingdom of darkness, deliver them from evil, Lord, and translate them into the kingdom of light. That is our prayer. That's why we're here, because we are safe. We're already safe. The moment we said yes to Jesus, we're safe forever. We'll never be lost. We'll never be rejected by you. You've taken us into your eternal presence. It started the day we said yes to Jesus. We don't have to wait till we're dead to know you. So thank you, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name that you will answer all these requests that have been shared. And we pray that you will continue to help us to look beyond just this physical reality into the reality of our God. That he loves us. That he gives life to us. That he sacrificed himself for us and continues to do so. We ask in Jesus' name that you'll open our hearts and minds to the word now. As James comes to share with us this week and next. And we pray that you would just help us to not hear only, but to take the truth of the Word of God into our lives and let it transform us. Amen. Amen. So James Coleman has uh, graciously agreed to cover me. T uh, I didn't know if I was not going to be here this week because the surgery was unsure. So I told him, cover me this week and next. So he's here this Sunday and next. So James, come on up. James Coleman. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. So um, I uh, just want to say, um, Barry, my wife, and I just love being part of this church, and we love how the Word of God is so lifted up uh, by Pastor Jimmy. Um, so when he gave me a call to, uh, to speak today, I knew exactly what I was going to speak on, um, and this is part of a, a burden that I'm going to, uh, this is very therapeutic for me to overcome a burden that I've been carrying for a while, and I want to give a little bit of background as to why. Um, I am, uh, when I was early, say pretty early on, I was reading through the message, and I, uh, when I got to Psalm 51, where David has this massive uh, problem with Bathsheba, 
you know, he, he, he said this, and this is when I was reading the message, so I'm going to quote the message even though it's a paraphrase. It says this. Um, he says, give me a job teaching rebels your ways um, so the lost can find their way home. And so uh, I submitted my job application, you know, and said, Lord, use me. And uh, he answered the prayer. And so I've been in uh, for a, quite a while now working with men in crisis. Um, I spent some time in the California prison system as a chaplain, working with uh, level three, which are murder, rapists, really bad, really bad guys, level three, level two inmates. And then uh, God opened me a door from that to work with uh, juveniles in detention, uh, juvenile probation. And uh, one of the young men that I met through that um, ended up getting into um, a recovery program in the Salvation Army. And he calls me, and he's a non-believer, and he says, um, you know, James, you love that Jesus stuff. Uh, would you come teach us the Bible um, at the Salvation Army in Oakland? And I can tell you this, I, I hate Oakland. <laughs> I don't like going there. Um, but um, I'm ex-military, so I felt like my commanding officer gave me an order. So I popped to attention and said, aye, aye, sir. So I've been doing that for eight years now. So every week um, I teach the Bible to atheists and agnostics. And, um, you know, men that are truly in crisis. And it's a joy of my life. I love it. Okay, but um, the reality is, is I, I kind of get overwhelmed sometimes because I feel I'm one of the few people they may ever encounter um, being a representative of God and the Word uh, before they go back out into the world because they're forced into this program. I mean, they volunteer for it, but part of the curriculum is a Bible study. Um, and so I'm, I, I run it pretty loose, you know, when I say, guys, just throw up every objection you can to God and let's, let's, let's address it. And so um, one of the... Uh, things they keep coming back with is science. It's a huge barrier. And I want to overcome that, and I've never had the guts to really hit it head on. And when Jimmy called, I said, you know, I got to get, I got to get this thing out of my system. Okay, now, um, Jimmy mentioned I'm an engineer, so don't hold it against me. I am educated. Um, so I really... Uh, when I became more educated and I got my graduate degree in mechanical engineering, I, the more I got educated, the more everything I learned in the past I felt was a lie. So, um, you know, some people say, well, you get more educated, you go away from God. I was the act opposite, and so I became saved after all that. And so um, one of my main messages to guys in recovery is, look, you have to man up. And you have to confront whatever worldview got you into a recovery program in Oakland. And I said, guys, it's time to let go of everything that you have against the Lord and just go with who Jesus is who he says he is. So at least be open to that concept. And so um, my hope is that you guys um, respond well to this. This is, um, I'm normally out there on the front line. And it's such a blessing to be amongst believers and that you guys can um, uh, coach me, hopefully, and say, yeah, that's lame, or hey, go for it. So, um, and also, I apologize. I really want to thank uh, Joy, and um, who's doing the slides up ahead, and Dory, because I, I made a rookie mistake, and I made the font way too small, but apparently they fixed it. So thank you for that. Um, so here we go. Uh, this is called the Upward Spiral part one, because I'm coming back next week unless you guys fire me. All right, so here's the worldview. Um, the world believes that science and God and the Bible are two separate entities, okay? Um, we know now as our, rea our reality, of course, is, is that God and the Bible is reality, and science is a very small part that describes what God has done, but it's pretty small compared to the attributes of God. Okay, so with that, I'm going to follow kind of this theme here. Um, so when 
okay, oh, okay, so what? People have this view. Well, um, when I was speaking to the men at the last men's group, you know, the scripture says um, we have divine power to dis- destroy arguments and every lofty opinion, right? And uh, Pastor Jimmy loves MacArthur, and he kind of like turned me on to it, so I've been using that a lot in my teaching. And here's what he defines the argument is, is like thoughts, ideas, speculations, reasonings, philosophies, false religions are ideological forts, which people barricade themselves against God and the gospel. So I convicted myself. I'm like, James, you got to come through and you got to address this. Okay, so here we go. Um, I want to talk a little bit of science, so just bear with me. I'm going to try to be really gentle with this. Um, Okay, so in thermodynamics, there's two major laws, and um, I just want to cover the, the two. Uh, first law of thermodynamics, total energy in a system is constant, although it can be converted from one form or another. Or another way of hearing it is energy can neither be created or destroyed. Um, have you heard that before? Right? Um, but it's in the way the scientists talk about it. It's in a closed system. Okay, so what is that? Um, and we use engineering software. This is from SolidWorks, so I'm just kind of using this to try to give a three-dimensional perspective of this. This is a closed system. It's a box, okay? Um, inside the box, according to the first law of thermodynamics, is this energy. Okay, now I thought about putting an equation in here, but I thought you guys would surely throw me out if I did math um, in church, right? So... <laughs> Um, essentially, it's saying this, that the energy, the initial energy and the final energy is always the same. So um, in the context of renewables, it's not really renewable. Um, it's just a transfer from one to the other. Okay. Um, now, here's where I want to spend a little bit more time in, and this is the second law. And this introduces a, a concept or a, a thing of called entropy. Okay, and it's kind of a fancy word, but essentially is, it means disorder. Okay, the second law says this, as entropy or disorder in the closed system increases. Okay, now check out this language, um, and this is not James, this is Wikipedia, okay? So the second law of thermodynamics is the law of physics stating, and check this language out, I love it, systems spontaneously evolve toward higher states of disorder. Okay, so think about that. And here's, I just want to ask a question. Well, let's, let's look at first the box. Okay, so now we have a closed box, and inside that box we have c- constant energy, and we have all of this disorder. Question. And I stated in terms of science, because these guys are all sciencey, right? If systems spontaneously evolve towards higher states of disorder, then how does this, uh, the theory of evolution conform to the second law of thermodynamics? It doesn't. Okay? Okay, so where am I going with this? Well, let's look at the biblical view. So thermodynamics, so yes, we're in a system in which there's clo- uh, total energy is constant, and there's all this disorder. Okay, but oh, by the way, God is outside of that closed system. Okay, so here is kind of our fun way of looking at this is is there's this sphere of of light, right? God's light encompassing this system in which there's finite energy and disorder. So where I want to to do is see how the Bible speaks to or um, how this disorder is described in the Bible, okay? And I want you to follow me along here. First off, it says here that cursed is the ground because this is the fall of man. And not mankind didn't just fall, uh, the creation did. Okay, so here it goes. Look at this language. Cursed is the ground because of you. Disorder. In pain, you shall eat all of it, eat of it all the days of your life. Pain is disorder, right? My body's not right. Jimmy's eye's not right, okay? Um, my wife's a big gardener, right? If you don't do anything, thorns and thistles, it shall bring forth for you. God says it. Um, you shall eat 
of the eat, eat the plants of the field, okay, um, by the sweat of the, your face. So now man has to work for order. And here, dust you shall return. Okay, so I will ultimately end up being a pile of dust. Okay? The only order talked about in this fall of mankind is God says, for out of it, all this disorder, you were taken. Okay? So the only thing in the fall is of order is God himself. All right? And so science right? So we talked about the closed system. Well, what does the Bible say about that? Well, I'm just continuing the fall of, this, of mankind, right? So we have all this order. Look at this language. He drove out the man. Okay? So now, biblically, man is outside of God's presence, closed in a system of disorder and work. Okay? So now, science and the Bible are perfectly aligned. We are in a closed thermodynamic system, which is described, and it's not like God conformed to the first and second law. God is above that. The first and second law merely describes what God has done. Okay, so we now, we, we don't have to have this drama where we have alignment now. Okay? So I love how um, a lot of times in evolution, you know, there's a, you see a picture of a fossil like a chicken bone, and then the artist draws a woolly mammal, right? How they typically, you know, and I just had fun with this. And so this is an artist rendition of systems after the fall. So here we are stuck in the closed system. We're in the box. And God is outside the box, and he's light. Okay, now here's a science view of the situation. Okay, we're in this box with finite energy disorder. And I, I like to use this... Um, <clears throat> this plane, like, this is the world. And um, the guys that I work with, like, I get it, because what happens is there's so much disorder, there's so much drama in life, it's overwhelming, chaos, right? And it overwhelms us, and the guy's just like, <sighs> I, mean, <sighs> I can't handle it, so they check out. Okay? It gets overwhelming. And... Um, like, I'm not judgmental about that because I kind of get it, right? It, it can be overwhelming. Um, but it gets worse because also in the box, with all this disorder, we have an enemy, okay? And I love how the Word of God speaks so plainly. It's like, hey, guys, this is, this is the trouble. So guys, and I'm men, men, men and women, okay? So we have in the box with us a liar. In fact, all he does is lie. So he speaks out of his own character. He's a liar and the father of lies. Okay, Jesus says, and it always comes with the opposite, I tell you the truth. Okay? And oh, by the way, what does the enemy do? Steal, kill, and destroy. And sorry, the graphic is over destroy. But I think destroy, I had in big fonts, bold, because I think that's what a lot of going on is. The accuser is in our face 24-7. This is what you're not, James. All day long, 24-7, in my grill, okay? Um, it is a downward, it, it, that right there can be a downward spiral. And, you know, one of the, the way I love to speak to the guys is, I call them my guys, um, they're drilling a hole in the ground, and their life is literally pouring into it because of this addiction, because they're stuck in this downward spiral of believing the lie. Okay? Even in Jesus' inner circle, let's look at Peter. Jesus tells Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan demanded, demanded that he might sift you like wheat. Okay, now, I did hear a Greek alert because I love to look at the, the Greek language because it has so much depth to it. So what is demanded? He's saying, Peter, I want to torture you. I want to punish you and and." How am I going to do it? This sifting figuratively means inward agitation. Look at this. To try to one's fate to the verge of overthrow. Okay, so it's so in my, so in my consciousness that I even want to abandon. The, the world 
can get at me so badly that I can even deny my own faith because I get so stinking overwhelmed. Okay? And that was to one of his inner circle. Okay? So here's the real picture. Is we have finite energy, all this disorder, and an enemy working against us. Okay? So, kind of a bad situation. Do you guys agree? Kind of sucks, actually. Except, Jesus tells us hope. He says here, and I love it, he speaks to us very plainly. There's the problem, and the problem is, you don't know me. And because you don't know me, you don't know my power. Okay? And in this world, he tells us, in that closed box, you're going to have tribulation. Now look at this word. And I like to think of it, it's pressure. It is just metaphorically just oppression, affliction. And it's this constant thing. And like these, these guys would tell me, it's like, James, man, this stuff ain't right. And I'm like, you're correct. Jesus tells it to your face. He agrees with you. Okay. Oh, but take heart. I have overcome. Now let's look at that word. It's carry off victoriously. It's a conquering um, and you look here, Christians even, uh, hold fast to their faith, even unto death against the power of their foes, temptation, persecution. So it's power to overcome it all. How does this happen? It's in a new, it's in a new creation. Okay, now, all of a sudden here, out of all this disorder, God's using the language of order. Okay? And also, he speaks here very plainly about the box. He says here that they are darkened in their understanding alienated from the life of God. There is the box because of what? Because of ignorance. Because my heart's hard, hard because of all of this, I'm so turned off, I become hard. Okay? So, he says this, the contrary, again, there's always a contrary. Renewal in here. All right? Put on the new self. And I think about, like, think about guys that are broken because of all of this stuff. Like, these guys have a great train of chaos behind, right? Because of bad decisions. Okay, and I tell them, it's like, look, think about this. You can put on a new self, a new creation, order, out of disorder, created after the likeness of God himself in true righteousness and holiness. Okay, so wait a minute. How does that, James, how does that, that is not according to the first and second law. Let's look at this. Jesus poked a hole in the box. Okay? He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Nobody comes outside the box unless it's through me. Okay? So there's hope. And God has shown this all through history. And I just picked two examples. One is this pillar of fire. Okay, so let's imagine we're all ancient Israelites in the desert at night. It's cold. There is a pillar of fire in our midst. It's like, hey, we're going over to Joshua's tent tonight. Let's take some hummus and some pita bread. And oh, by the way, I'm walking there. I'm like, honey, I'm a little cold. So let me just, um, let me kind of get, ooh, it gets warmth by this pillar of God's presence, right? Oh yeah, let me heat up my backside a little bit, right? So there's this Symbol of God breaking through. This is not described by any law, sec, first or second law of thermodynamics, right? So God is outside. He is showing himself. Look at that. Um, by day and night, the fire did not depart from the, from the people who never leave us. Okay, and here's another one that will bring you to your knees. Uh, Hezekiah was asking God for a sign of he's going to be healed and God actually took a shadow and moved it backward 10 steps. Okay, now as an engineer, and I think about inertia, momentum, physics, uh, that one blows my mind. Okay, so clearly God has dominion over the first and second laws. Uh, another one, a really good example, I probably should have used this, it's better, but um, Jacob's ladder, right? Jacob saw this vision of, angels ascending and descending, right? So God is clearly trying to break through to us that he's broken through the system. 
this is pretty busy, but I'm going to cut to the chase. His divine power has granted to us all things pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. So he's calling us out of the system to go back and benefit the system. Okay, now, I, this, this uh, talk is called the upward spiral. So check this out in verse 5. Okay, so for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. Okay, so here we're on an upward climb. Virtue with knowledge. Knowledge with self-control. Self-control with steadfastness. Steadfastness with godliness. Godliness with brotherly affection. Brotherly affection with love. Okay, for if these qualities are yours and increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And check this out. I love this. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior. It's like shot right through the system. Okay? And I use this term a lot with my guys. And it's like, hey, we need to go seriously vertical. Okay? This is the only way for us. So first step here is faith. Okay? So step one is, I believe. Okay, I have faith that I'm broken, God isn't, and I need him to save me. Okay, so out of that, it's like, wow, that's awesome. So now I'm going to start behaving better, more, I'm bit more morally excellent called virtue. Right, so I start actually walking it out. And oh, by the way, in process of that, I'm going to start getting in the word. And God will reveal himself to me. And what does that do for me? It's like, wait a minute, now I have power and I have knowledge I can actually not use. There's a thing called, so I can not be frustrated at all these destructive habits that we might have. Okay, so now I've got some self-control, and God uses this next one steadfast all the time. Stand firm, right? So we are now with that, it's like, wait a minute, now I've got some self-control, my life's getting better. I can actually stand pretty firm in this now. Okay, so now I'm steadfast, and this next one's awesome. Because it's like, I can be more godly-like because of this, okay? So all of those up to now are all internal for me. Now look at what happens is, is now it goes outside. Because now with this, and so now I got to get, I got to get right. Okay, now... You had said you're going to like some counseling school, some and like I've been interested in self uh, improvement all my life. As a young naval officer, I was very interested in leadership, and I do believe that there is good things that um, can happen with psychology because I think it's describing our broken condition. Okay, um, so. But ultimately, a lot of it fails to me because it ends up being about me and everything, the power's in you and all that. No, my power's upstairs, okay? And I can ask him for power. And so now with his power, I can actually be affectionate to my brothers. Um, and oh, by the way, what's the next step is the pinnacle, and that's love. And Jimmy and I were talking afterwards, and it's, the world really doesn't even understand this because it involves Christ giving himself up, okay? So there's nothing, that's, that's the best. That is where we are heading ultimately, but we have to go do, um, we actually get to work at it, okay? So we have to go through this upward spiral knowing that God provides it, but he allows us the opportunity to get close to him so that we can be effective for him. Okay, so here we go. So this is an awesome perspective. So now we actually have divine power. And I'd like to, us to think about that for a moment. Power, pretty awesome. Divine power, incredible. Okay, and to do what? Um, represent him. So we have divine power to overcome and represent the overcomer. Okay, so we can actually be agents of hope. Okay, now look at this, and this is where um, we'll wrap up. 
But I love this, um, I love this prayer by Paul because he says here in verse 18, having the eyes of your heart enlightened. Okay, and I love the concept that my heart has eyes. I think it's super sweet. The problem is most of my life I have pink eye or a conjunctivitis, right? It's all goopy and messy. It's kind of closed, pretty much a mess, right? So I kind of got to lean, lean like that and let Jesus drops fall into it to like give me a way to see clearer. And what does he want us to see? Check this out. Hope. We are called to hope. We are not called to destruction, okay? So it gets overbearing, and I get it, but we have to keep going vertical that we need. We are called to hope, okay? And check this one out. This is incredible because this is what's happening right here is, and what are the riches of his glorious inheritance of the saints? So we are God's inheritance. This is a, we are a glorious inheritance together. Nowhere on the planet does this exist. It is the church of God. It represents his body. Okay? And it gets better. What is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? Okay, let's ponder this a minute. Can you measure what is immeasurable? All right, I'm an engineer. Everything's quantified. We measure everything. Okay? I can't measure this. It is beyond, think about, this is beyond quantification. And you know what, guys? It is applied toward you. Okay, so I get how we can get like in our stinking thinking, but man, we got to go, whew, let me go here because wait a minute, I have a measurable great power. Okay, and look at this upward thing, and I love this language, and it's like smackdown. Okay. It's the same power he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand, authority, position of authority, in the heavenly places outside the system, okay, far above, not even close, all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but the one to come. And he put all things under his feet, Amen. right, smack down. Okay, and gave him as a head over all things to the church, which is his body. Okay, and listen to this. The fullness of him who fills all in all. Because I will tell you in engineering, science, there's all kinds of equations that involve constants. Constants are all over the place. Okay, he's the glue. He is the one who fills it all. He is the constant. Okay, so science and God are not disrelated. They are, is, science is a subset of all that he is. And we have an incredible conduit to all of it. Okay, so with that, we can think differently and not behave the same way we were behaving to where we're driving ourselves further in the ground. Lord, we thank you that you have broken through. We thank you that you have shattered the closed system and that you have given us your son as the way to yourself, to this power that we confess we need to work on, Lord, and a reality in our lives and that we may, in this broken system, in this broken world, um, become closer to you to bear fruit in your glorious name. Amen. Thank you so much.
Well, thank you once again for being part of our service this morning. We hope that it's been a blessing. It certainly has been for us. And we hope to see you again next week. And don't forget, if you like what you're seeing, there's a little like button on our YouTube channel and a similar thing on our Facebook page as well. And just reiterating, there is another link down there to send us a quick note. If you want us to continue these things and these have been a blessing to you, let us know. We'd love to keep doing it. Thank you for being with us.